Wagner is an enormous person. He's one of those people you've just got to get your head around if you want to understand Western culture. Whether you like him or not, whether you come out at the end hating him, you have got to come to terms with him in some way or other. He threw down the gauntlet, and you can see the ripples of Wagner's influence spreading out in all sorts of directions, so that even people who don't know they're influenced by Wagner are influenced by Wagner. You know, uh, take the Star Wars films. The idea originally of creating that is a trilogy, each one in a way complete in itself, but nevertheless adding up to something greater. Behind that is Wagner, is the ring. And not just that, but a lot of the archetypal themes that are dealt with in a film like Star Wars are these very archetypes that Wagner was investigating. What he did to the sound of music is incalculable. That gorgeous quality that the composer Claude Debussy said about the orchestration, that it has a quality of being lit up from behind. It's, it sounds absolutely marvellous. Okay, from Darth Vader to Parsifal. Could you cast us back to the source of the opera? The accredited source, you might say, for Parsifal is an enormous poem, well over 2,000 lines, by a medieval German poet called Wolfram van Eschenbach. Called. And there we find the character of Parsifal, Percival, in more or less the form that Wagner took him. But Wagner was a great synthesizer. His knowledge of culture, of literature, as well as music, of drama, of art, of philosophy, was immense. More so, I think, than any other 19th century composer, at least. And so it's combined with images from the Bible, with images from later Christian thinking, with images from ancient Greek tragedy, which is a lot of the real crucible in which a lot of Western art is born. But also, and this is fascinating, with ideas from the Far East. Because in the 19th century, German thinkers were beginning to explore some of, the philo some of the religious writings of the Far East. And one particular, Arthur Schopenhauer, great philosopher, had found what he looked for in Hinduism and particularly in Buddhism. And uh, his writings on the role of meditation, on the role of compassion, instilling the unquenchable longing which is at the heart of all human existence, um, is something which Wagner responded to very powerfully indeed. And for the rest of his life, he struggled to incorporate Schopenhauer's thinking into his own. And Parsifal probably takes this more than anything else, particularly this idea that through compassion, one can achieve release not just for oneself, but for the object of one's compassion as well. This is something reflected in different ways in all three acts of Parsifal. The opera was written to consecrate a building or to consecrate a stage. Could you talk about what that consecration meant and how it was manifested in, in, uh, in the opera itself? Well, Parsifal was the first and indeed the only opera that Wagner wrote for his own stage, the stage that he longed for for so long at Bayreuth, this place where he designed everything from the seating to the acoustic in the pit and the way that everything worked in this place. It was all absolutely right. It was the first work he'd written where he knew the sound of the auditorium that he was writing for, which is a very important question. So Parsifal is specifically created for the sound of that place. I think Wagner felt that Parsifal summed up everything that he wanted to say about the communal value, the religious in the broader sense value, of art. Uh, Wagner realized in a way that the whole idea of God was failing, or his one-time friend Nietzsche put it, that God is dead, um, that humankind still needed some sense of transcendence, some sense of spirituality, something that would unite them and indicate what he thought that the world, the modern world needed to know, the modern world that was losing faith in traditional religion, the modern world that was discovering a new way of being national or international, 
and Parsifal was that beacon for him. The important thing I think to stress here is because there have been so many eloquent Wagnerians and so many people who have expounded Wagnerism in all sorts of different ways, it can seem that there is a consistent, worked out philosophy called Wagnerism that makes sense of all this stuff. And once you've got it, that's it. Everything slots into place and you can understand how the music works in association with it. But I don't see Wagner like that at all. And I don't think, in his more honest moments, Wagner saw himself like that. Wagner was very very well prepared at his best to admit the contradictions with himself, the contradictions within his own ideas. Here's a work that preaches allegedly renunciation on a sort of Christian Buddhist ascetic model, yet the music seems to be arguing for anything but asceticism, anything but renunciation. Music is some of the most beautifully physical music for, for what, what else is music if it's not physical? And I think it's quite legitimate to say I am prepared just to enjoy this music and not bother with what's going on in the story. But if you also feel something of the release ritually and humanly that has happened on the stage, then it's impossible not to feel the coming together of drama, idea, philosophy and music and sense that, yes, this is one of those moments when something greater than all the sum of the parts is born.